Let's take a look back, Mike, on October. Uh, it's always the most fun time of year in terms of putting together predictions. What's going to happen? I, I said in my story today on dailyfaceoff.com, taking a look back at the 32 bold predictions that I made in October, it's kind of like playing darts at your local watering hole on Tuesday nights. You know, you've got a rare bullseye that you hit every now and again, a lot of misses, and then some shots that just make you look plain drunk. And certainly that was definitely the case for you and I back in October when the both of us picked the Winnipeg Jets to win the Stanley Cup. It's sort of like that moment in Billy Madison where he's trying to graduate and they say, I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul. We picked a team, Mike, that didn't even make the playoffs. This is the second time that I've done that for a Canadian team in the last five years. I said the Oilers would win the Cup in 2018, did not make the playoffs. The Winnipeg Jets have the same fate. I apologize to the Winnipeg Jets and their fan base, and I am now barred in the future from pick a, picking a Canadian team to end Canada's Cup drought because they don't make the playoffs anytime I do it. I have those same feelings. It's a good thing we're not going to show all the stati all the categories on the board in Billy Madison because some of those are pretty offside for our show. But uh, it's a great reference. And I, too, picked the Jets. I like that team at the start. I thought they had scoring. I thought they improved their D, good goaltending. And they were bad enough that their coach that I've seen enough, Paul Maurice, walks away from the club. So uh, my bold prediction that I got wrong, really two of them. I had the Islanders winning and uh, Islanders in the finals. I don't think anybody could have predicted this tough a season as they started with with COVID and the arena situation. I just missed that. And then I had the Flames as fifth in the Pacific, Frank. And that was behind Vegas, Edmonton, L.A., Vancouver. I was way off. Uh, and I didn't give that team enough credit for – what Brad Tree Living did to mold that roster into what Daryl Sutter can work with. And then as the season's gone on, he's just made it better. Really impressive from the Flames. Yeah, I didn't have the Flames making the playoffs either. And man, there were some other really bad picks. I had a, a points bet favorite in there, a points bet a point total. It was Buffalo Sabres over under 68 and a half. And I said under. I was like, they played at a 54 point pace last season over an 82 game season. How could this team possibly improve by a significant margin without Jack Eichel in the mix? We knew at that point he'd be sitting out until he got traded. And lo and behold, they shattered that number last week with a few games to go. This one hurt double, Mike. Not only did I predict it publicly, but I also put some of my own money on the line. It was one of my biggest preseason bets made. Those are kind of the only bets I make all season long. I like playing with the point totals and a couple other that hit, but geez. Sabres, they've gotten way better under Don Granado. They fought uh, and certainly against some tough, te tough teams down the stretch. And they've gotten better, especially since Alex Tuck arrived and has gotten healthy and into their lineup. Yeah, I've been impressed with them, man. And I think it's it's easy to look at that club and be pretty optimistic of the future. Tuck's done great. Krebs is coming into his own. Owen Power's there. And things for people in Buffalo to finally be excited about. But we did get some right, Frank. We did make some good predictions. We did. And what what would you say is the prediction you're most proud of that you got right from the beginning of the season? You know, I had the Rangers finishing second in the Metro, which looks like that might be what ends up happening. And I based that call more or less on Gerard Gallant coming in as head coach and knowing how he's been able to come in and change a culture around and get a, a team playing with some speed, with some energy, with some fun. I thought he would be a really good mix with that team. And they had plenty of skill up front. They had Adam Fox of a Norris trophy, trophy winning defenseman. And I knew Shishjurkin could carry the mail on goal. He's been better than I ever expected. Um, but that was kind of my flyer pick of the of the preseason. You know, I wasn't, it's one of those where I wasn't really sure about it, Frank, but I was like, I, I just got a hunch here. Uh, and that one turned out really well. I also picked Darcy Kemper to win the Vezina. Now he's not going to be in the mix. I doubt he's going to get votes for it this year. If he'd have had a better start to the season, I think he would be there because right now he's third in save percentage at 924, second in wins at 36. He just started off rocky. So I, I don't mind my pick there, but man, if I'd have known what Shostakovich was going to do, I think he would have been a pretty easy one. You and I must have been sharing a brain during prediction season because I also had Kemper winning the Vezina, and you're right. A little bit of a shaky start the first two months of the season, 903 save percentage. Since then, he's been unbelievable from December 1st on. He's gotten points in 30 of his 35 starts. He's 27, 5, and 3, and has a 932 save percentage. He's been, I don't know if he's gotten enough love 
around the league with yeah. the special season that just Thurkin has had. Markstrom's been good. Demko has been unbelievable. Saros has been great, but Kemper has been right there. So uh, certainly don't get credit for the missed pick, but he has had a great season. Uh, you and I were also sharing a brain, Mike, on Austin Matthews and his goal total. I picked mm -hmm. 62 at the start of the year. You had 59. He's sitting right at 58 at the moment. And he's someone that is potentially getting back on the ice tonight. He had participated in the Toronto Maple Leafs optional skate this morning. So he could be facing off against the Philadelphia Flyers tonight at Scotiabank Arena. But Matthews sitting out last game, Mike, I think was a little bit of a reminder in terms of just how bold that pick was because it's not just to get to a place that so few players have been in the 60-goal range. Steven Stamkos, the last to do it in 2012, it's really also dependent on his health, which he's been more or less pretty healthy all season long. He has. I mean, you and I picked the highest goal totals. You at 62, me at 59. We were the most optimistic of the daily face-off bunch when it came to Austin Matthews. But I'm just watching him play and thinking he can absolutely do this year in and year out. And my only question at the beginning was his health. And was Mitch Marner going to be able to carry it all year? And when Marner's been healthy in the lineup, they've been as dynamic as any other pairing in the NHL. I think you're going to end up being right on this one, Frank. I think Matthews is going to get closer to your total at 62 than what I said at 59. I think he's actually going to exceed it. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up at 65. Seven goals over the next five games or so. Seems eminently doable for Mr. Matthews and the Toronto Maple Leafs.